chapter. So this is going to begin uh, the matter chapter. And I know it kind of looks weird. It is chapter 1. But again, we do a lot of stuff prior and I come back to chapter 1 because a lot of this stuff is just kind of basic. Uh, and we can go through it really quickly. Um, so we're going to do a few things. Uh, today we're just going to do everything that's on these three bullets. We're going to talk. We're going to define chemistry. We're going to list examples of the, the branches of chemistry. We're going to talk about the different types of research. So my first question to you guys is, and don't read, just, just kind of talk to me. How would you define chemistry if you had to define it? Like if someone said define chemistry for me, what would you say? There's not a right or wrong answer. What would you say? Okay, science of elements. Science with chemicals. Okay, I like that, the way things are made up. We're going to get to that. That's very good. Anybody got anything else? Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just how would you personally define it? Okay, difficult. <laughs> Anything else? Huh? Polyatomics? <laughs> All right. So here is Webster's version, and this is what it says. Webster says, chemistry is the study of. I'm going to stop right there. It's something you have to actually study. You can't just absorb it like a sponge. You actually have to put time into it. So chemistry is the study of the composition, structure, and physical properties of matter, the processes that the matter undergo, and the energy changes that accompany these processes. Now, let's break this down and make it make a little more sense. So, first of all, composition. Someone define composition for me. What does it mean? I like that. So, let's start there. So, it's what uh, it's what it's made of. Okay? What it's made of. Now you can you write all over this. This these are your notes. It's what it's made of. Okay. What elements is it? Water is what? Hyd hydrogen and oxygen. It's H two O. So that's its composition. Okay. Does anybody know glucose? Very good. That's glucose. Okay. So that's what it's that's its composition. Because it matters. What is structure? How it's built, how it's designed, how it's... All right, so it's design and appearance. Okay? It's design and it's appearance. You're going to learn something about the design and the structure of all these compounds and elements we're going to talk about. Okay? We're going we're to do something called Lewis structures later on in the year, and it's what a molecule actually looks like three-dimensional. Okay. So it's important to understand the structure and the composition because it leads into this. Properties of matter. What are the two basic properties of anything? There's two properties. The physical and chemical. Very good. The physical and chemical properties. And we're going to get to that into this chapter as well. Thank you. So those are the two properties that everything has. It's got a physical property. It's got a chemical property. And the way and the reason it has its own its own specific properties is because of what it's made of and how it looks and how it's built, how it's designed, how it's structured. Okay? So those two things parlay into its properties and the reason it has those specific properties. Then, the processes that matter undergo. Okay? So processes is how is it going to change? And that's a question. How can we manipulate it? How can we affect it? What can we get it to do when we mix it with other things? If I take baking soda and vinegar and pour them together, does anybody know what happens? It bubbles and fizzes and foams. Why? I mean, what makes it do that? Okay, it's a chemical reaction. But what's so special about those two things that when you put them together, they react that way? Everyone knows that fireworks is chemical reactions, right? Okay. Why, do, when you set them on fire, do they blow up in all those random colors? Okay. Every element that's in there, there's a specific color for each element. And so when you see red and you see blue and you see green and yellow and white, it's specific elements giving you those specific colors. And then finally, and the energy changes that accompany them. So let me ask you this. Can energy ever be created or destroyed? No, that's the law of conservation of energy. Energy can only do what? Change forms. Okay? So here's what I want you to know about energy. Energy is either going to be, uh, two things are going to happen. It's either going to be released or what? Or absorbed. Very good. That's it. 
That's the only two things energy can do. You can either take it in or you can give it off. You can't make it, you can't break it, you can't destroy it. That's it. You're either going to release it or you're going to absorb it. So this is what chemistry is. In this entire year, we're going to focus on all of these things. That's what this whole year is built around is this single definition. We're going to talk about what compounds are and what matter is and what solutions are. That's the composition. We're going to get into what an atom looks like and why it looks like that, what a compound looks like, what a, what a crystal looks like, and why it's shaped that way. And then because of what it's made of and because of how it looks, what type of properties does that make it have? Why is diamond so strong, but why is, other, why is just regular carbon so weak? Okay, think about that. What's the difference between the lead in your pencil and the diamond in a ring? It's all made up of carbon. All of it is. It's how it's bonded together. So why is one so strong and the other one weak? And those are the kind of things we're going to talk about. And then, again, we're going to talk about how they change and why they change, and then the energy that is related to those changes. Okay? So that is what chemistry is. Now, when you hear the word chemical, is that a scary word to most people? Most people, it's a scary word, but don't let it be because it, it's really not. The first thing you need to know, again, if you have a highlighter, this may be a good thing to highlight. If not, if you just want to circle it, whatever you want to do. Um, highlight, if I can actually get it in the right color, it has a definite composition. And I'm going to explain that. But how could you explain definite composition? What would that mean to you? Say that again. Okay. Will it ever change? It's always the same. It's permanent. Does anybody know what sucrose is? Anybody? It is. It's sugar. It's sugar. Let's see where my super nerds are. Does anybody know what this chemical formula of sucrose is? I'll give you, I'll give you the first letter. It's C something. C12. H twenty two O eleven. That is the chemical formula for sucrose. If you change one of those numbers, is it sucrose anymore? Nope. That's what it means by definite composition. Okay. If you change the carbon to silicon, is it sucrose anymore? No. Okay. It's got to be that. That's what it means by definite composition. What is water by formula? H two O. Okay. If I hypothetically threw this up there, H2O2, is that the same thing? Adding one oxygen completely changes the functionality, the properties, the structure, all of it. Does anyone know what H2O2 is? You used it when you got a boo-boo. What is it? Very good. Hydrogen, <laughs> hydrogen peroxide. Okay. This is hydrogen peroxide. And then finally, the last thing, does anybody know what carbon dioxide is? CO2. Now, I want to throw this at you. One of the things we're going to learn this year is how to name compounds. You've been saying that word your whole life, and you didn't realize you, you were naming a compound while you were saying it. So think about this, just logically. Carbon dioxide. Based on the formula, how do you think it got its name? Okay. Carbon is C. Di means what? Two. And oxide is amazing. Carbon dioxide. Okay. Is C O. Okay. All right, we'll stop here and we'll pick up on Monday.